so good morning guys i hope you're doing well i want to appreciate you so so much for your support today we are going to be talking about why are african babies actually cry hey cry so how are you my people and it's another video today we're going to be uh, comparing african babies to german babies this is uh, the way they are actually uh, brought up when they are little how it happens so this goes according to the title of the video why african babies actually cry less compared to german babies do you know can you tell the difference write them down in the comment section in case you don't know me my name is puriville so the first thing is that um african babies they are not on nursing schedules at all so it's any time you feed the baby, any time the baby is crying, you see the mother is able to remove the breast and is able to actually feed the baby, okay? But here you are actually advised within three hours, try and feed the baby and all that. Also uh, wake up, uh, if I can remember correctly, I stand to be corrected. You're told after every three hours, you also need to check whether the baby has food. After that, you feed the baby back to sleep, but back at home, anytime, anytime you hear, oh, yeah. <laughs> you just remove your breast and you feed the baby, okay? So another major difference is that uh, back in Africa, uh, the whole community, actually the whole family is involved in childbearing in the sense that when you give birth, you have your mama there, you have uh, your, uh, not the father, definitely the father does not help. It's so minimal to, when you find a father in African culture who is involved in taking care of the child when they are so little. Right now, it's, it has changed. Things are modern. So there are some men who are actually involved in it. But before, men, it was not so much. But one thing I love that is that when you give birth in your home, you have your family to help you. You have your mom there, you have your sisters, you have your aunties, you have your grandmothers, okay? You have your friends who immediately when you give birth, they come and stay with you for maybe a couple of weeks or a month. They help you to look after the child, to feed, to help. they help you. Your mom is usually there. I've seen that with my sisters. My mom was there to help them, you see? So that is something so different and something that um, I actually wished when I realized that I was pregnant for the first time because you're a first time mom. You don't know anything about babies apart from what I saw when I was little with my sisters. So when I was little, yeah, when I saw my sisters, I may, when they gave birth and the way they used to take care of their children. So I was relying on that um, memory to be able to take care of my newborn baby, my first baby. So that is something that is so different here. You're actually alone in this expect uh that you have maybe the father of the baby with you who is willing to help whereby i had a i have a good husband who was always there for me who always actually helped me some things that you don't expect a man to do he was actually doing it but let me tell you it's not the same as having your mother with you or your sister with you or having maybe an aunt or a grandma with you helping you out it is so difficult because remember guys uh, my hubby also never knew anything to do with small children how to react to the newborn so it was quite challenging because in the process we were both learning okay some things we were doing mistakes but in the process I used to look for a way which I could be able to get hold of my sister-in-law, my best friend. I, I had to call her and ask her, um, how do I do this? What am I supposed to do? What should I do? Or sometimes I call my mom and tell my mom, um, mommy, the mokonyo, mokonyo is usually the belly, the belly button. Should I call it a belly button? <laughs> Yeah, here in the stomach that maybe, mom, it has not yet fallen down uh, within a week. 
is it normal you know i was so pressured up because i never knew so many things so that is also a very big difference that um actually african children don't cry a lot because there is always someone there to take care of them if you're living here if you're alone you maybe need to do some things in the house maybe you need to go everywhere so you're up and down not giving full attention maybe to the child okay so you'll find at times your child will be like crying another yeah. thing uh another so, reason that uh, african children don't cry a lot it is because that uh, we don't believe in the fact that uh, children should, uh, babies, small babies, should be able to soothe themselves. Me saying this is because of here there's the use of uh, nook. I'll actually, I'm calling it nook, but it's actually a schnuller, okay? I'll show you that picture over here. So this uh, is what uh, children are usually maybe kept in their mouth, and every time they are. So, <laughs> so they'll not find a chance to even cry. Okay, their their mouth is usually so so busy. But let me tell you, uh, at some point the child gets tired and throws his uh, throws his way, throws it away. Okay, my baby used to do that a lot. Actually, she got very angry at some point because she knew when she starts singing, I'll just take it and. <laughs> put it inside the mouth and uh, her mouth and then she'll be able to keep quiet so here that is what they do but let me tell you back at home once the baby cries um they're not uh, given the schnuller and then they're left there maybe to keep quiet no 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 no. Uh, the mother maybe carries the child on the back and tries to soothe the baby to sleep or holding them and singing for them. There are these beautiful songs that you also sing. I'm not saying that Germany they don't sing for their babies. No, 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 no. Yeah. But I'm saying self-soothing for us is so minimal. Almost not at all. Mothers are always up and down trying to soothe their babies. Okay. But there's some people here also have not adapted to what the kind of culture that is actually here. Like me, some things have not adapted. Actually, I used with my first child um, the schnula and to stop her from it, hey, it was hard. It was hard. It was hard work between me and the father trying to make her to stop taking it. Because let me tell you, when you give your child that schnula before that child actually stop taking that schnula you even see them in kindergarten with them and actually that schnula sometimes can destroy the baby's teeth okay so personally i will not advocate for that if i was to give birth to another child i will stay away from that uh, my second child i tried uh the schnula but with him to actually let go of the schnula it was so fast yeah at times the schnula usually helps a lot especially maybe when you're going to church uh the baby will not cry you'll only use that and you'll not uh keep on removing your breasts everywhere to feed them not like back at home you have to eh? it's at home whether you're in the past wherever you are you just feed your baby <laughs> But I'm not saying that is bad. I'm actually just trying. So another to reason why um, okay. African babies actually cry less compared to German babies, it's because their parents actually respond to the baby's needs immediately. In the fact that um, back at home, uh, a child, it's only that people back in Africa they are trying to adapt to the Western culture right now. They want to be like uh westernized but let me tell you a real african woman they will not um they will not uh buy like a separate bed for the baby though here we advised for health reasons it is good for the baby to actually sleep alone okay so there are also benefits of actually letting your child uh, sleep separately from you guys and also for own protection because let me tell you for example <laughs> like my husband, you can sleep and forget that there is a newborn. So it would be just advisable for you to have like a small bed for your baby. Okay, some do it even in separate rooms. But let me tell you, you know, in the middle of the night when you're so, so sleepy, 
mm. and you imagine that you have to walk through the corridor to go and get your child away <laughs> me that will be so my baby will be maybe crying day in day out actually slept with mine and uh at some point uh, my hubby used to sleep at the end i sleep in the middle and my baby sleeps at the end the side of the wall so that uh, my baby will not get into contact with the father because my husband actually forgets that we have a newborn somewhere he sleeps can't sleep on even the baby baby don't worry <laughs> don't get angry just in case you see this so that's actually um, the differences that i've stated okay so in africa we respond to the baby's needs immediately because most mothers actually sleep with their children in the same bed so you will not get a chance where the child will be crying at any given point they do cry but you find that even when they're in the bed when they cry they hear uh, the smell of the mother and the teeth is just there the baby uh, the mother just removes and the baby is fed and then yeah the night goes on and they sleep and wake up well so i hope you have enjoyed the video and we had three points to note so guys until the next one guys it's a bye bye from me